All right, you guys, this is going to be the first project for the digital arts classes. Um, this is called the sandwich project. So I am going to show you how to do everything through these videos. Um, each project will get its own video. That way you are able to watch it um, at your own speed. You can pause, rewind, and if you're absent, you're able to access it there as well. So we are gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing you wanna do is find your Google Classroom. And there are a few links down here. I already showed you what these were. But for right now, for this project, we are going to be clicking on the Pixlr E link, which is the top, should be at least the top of your Google Classroom. And we are going to click Create New. Just make sure you're logged in. Create New. And then there's lots of different options here. So we want to select Photo right here at the top. And then we want to find Landscape 7 by 5 which is right here, landscape 7 by 5. Um, you want to name this. We're going to name this sandwich underscore your name. So since my name is Ava, I'm writing my name Ava. You're not writing Ava unless that's your name. You're writing your own name. We can turn the background switch on to white, which it should already be selected as white. And once all of this looks good, you can click Create. And there we go. All right. So the first thing we want to do is go to the Google Classroom, um, find the link to the website, which should be at the bottom of the classroom, and then head over to the Digital Arts tab. If you hover over that, you will get to the Sandwich Project. And here we go. We have lots of stuff here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to scroll down to the background. So here's our background. So this wood table. We're going to copy this photo. So you're going to right click. If you're on your Chromebook and you don't have a mouse, right click is just a light tap with two fingers on the keypad. Um, if you're using a mouse, obviously it's literally the right side of the mouse. Click copy, go to Pixlr. Now you can paste it two different ways. There is edit, paste, or right here, control V. So either one of those works. So here we go. We're going to stretch this out. It's OK if it goes over the edge a little bit. We just want to make sure all of the white is covered so it's not going to fit perfectly. Um, and then we're going to come over here to the Layers panel. This is very important. This is where all your layers are. Sorry, that's my dog. Um, we're going to right click on this layer where it says Clipboard. And we're going to name this Table. All of this other stuff can stay where it is. Um, but you know what? We can also click the locked button. Right now it's unlocked. So if we click locked, that way it won't, it won't move because we don't want this to move. Once you have that set up, we're going back to the Google or to the website. I'm sorry. And we're going to start making our sandwich. So the first thing that we have to do is find the plate right here. Here's the plate. Again, copy image, right click and then we're gonna paste it. So I'm gonna try Control V this time. Um, we're gonna make this a little bit bigger. That way, it's, it's a little bit blurry, but that's okay. Okay, so then we are gonna take the magic wand because we have to get rid of this white background somehow. And we are just gonna click on the white background, right? That's it. Um, so over here, you can see that it kind of gets a little bit of that plate in there. We don't want that. So I'm going to click Control D as in dog to get rid of those dots. And I'm going to try to lower my tolerance. So that means that it's going to select, it's going less in the, into detail. So it's going to select hopefully only the white. So I'm going to try 25. That looks good. And then once you have it clicked, you can click the backspace button and it's gone. To get rid of the mat, these are called marching ants in the technology world. So to get rid of these marching ants, you're going to click Control D. Okay. Right now we are still in the magic wand tool. So if we click anything else, it's going to think we want to get rid of something else. So we're going to go back to our move tool, which is right up here. Looks like the mouse. That way we're able to move it. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, I think, just in case. And it's too big. Okay, just like that. I'm going to have it centered. If you hover over the middle like this, it's able to be centered. 
So I'm going to come over here. I am going to rename this to plate and we're going to lock this layer as well because we don't want this to move. Sometimes when you have a lot of layers, things start moving around and it's not great. Back to my website. Next, we are going to start building this sandwich. So we're going to take a piece of bread top for here, right click, copy image, and then we're going to click control V or edit paste. And once again, we have this white background. So taking my magic wand, tolerance is still at 25. So you probably don't have to change that. And I'm going to click here and backspace. And there we go. If you would like to get rid of this shadow as well, you don't have to. Um, but you can. I think it looks a little bit more realistic if you don't have it. Um, just click on that and then it's gone. Backspace. And then I'm going to click in Control D to get rid of those marching ants. And then back to my move tool. So this one, let's make this a little smaller. And I'm going to take this up here where my cursor turns into a hand when I go over this circle. I'm going to kind of tilt it just a little bit. Okay, so I have a little bit of a line here that I didn't see, so I need to take that out. So instead of using my magic wand, I'm going to use my eraser tool, which is down here, looks like a little eraser. And up here is the toolbar, in case you want to make it bigger, um, change the opacity, which we will end up doing at a different time. But I think everything looks good for right now. So if I take my eraser and I just go right around, it works. Now the reason, oh, if you mess up, click Control Z, like zipper, and then it'll undo what you just did. That Control Z is your new best friend. Um, the reason it's not getting rid of the plate or the background is because we are on the bread layer only. So that looks good to me. Clicking my move tool again, and I'm going to rename this to bread. And we could lock this guy too. We don't want him to move. Back to the website. We are going to start making our sandwich. I guess this is a BLT because all we have is lettuce, tomato, and bacon, which is still fine. So I'm going to right click on the lettuce, copy image, control V to paste, or you can click edit, paste, either one. I'm going to make him a little bit bigger. I kind of want the edges to come off of the bread a little bit. I'm going to turn it so it's in line. And then our magic wand, click on the white background, backspace. Control D to get rid of the dots. And there we have it. Back to my move tool because I don't want to erase anything else. Um, I like how this comes off of the edge here because eventually that's all we're going to see. We're not going to see all this in the middle. And I kind of want to add another one. So to do that, we are just going to duplicate this. So to duplicate, that is edit. Hmm, there is any, there's no duplicate button on this one. Okay, so we're gonna try something new. We're gonna click copy. So we copied this and we're gonna paste it. Edit, paste. So now there's two, look at that. All right, so this is going the exact same direction. I don't want that. I want this to flip over. So to flip it, there's this little flip horizontal button up here. There's also flip vertical. We're going to click flip horizontal. What would happen if I clicked flip vertical too? Okay, we could do that. Flip horizontal, flip vertical. I like that. And then I'm going to take this. I'm going to turn it. That way I get some of the lettuce off of that edge as well. Now we can do edit. Copy, edit, paste again. That way we have some coming off the top as well. So I'm going to click my flip horizontal, flip vertical, and I'm going to turn it so the top is showing. Just like that. So I have three pieces of lettuce. Again, I know I'm moving a little bit fast. If you need to rewind, you may do that. So now I'm starting to get a lot of layers over here. Um, this is why it's important that we name these. So I'm going to right click on all three of these and I'm going to name them lettuce and we're going to lock them. It is actually one thing that oh, Photoshop doesn't do as easily is the ability to lock. Here we go. Lettuce, lettuce, lettuce. 
So you should have all these layers here. This one down here, this can stay here. That's just like a clear background. It doesn't really matter. All right, next up we have our tomato. So we're going to right click, copy, go back, control V or edit paste. And this one doesn't come with a white background, which is nice. So we're going to make two of these. I'm going to have it stick off a little bit. And then edit, copy, edit, paste. Then move this guy down here. Just like that. That was easy. Um, once again, I'm going to rename these tomato, and I'm going to lock that. Tomato, lock, perfect. Now our last ingredient, I guess you could say, to our sandwich is the bacon. So I am going to copy that, and we are going to control V or edit paste. This one, again, does not have a white background, which is great. And I'm going to move this to the top, just so a little bit of it shows outside of the bread, so you can see what kind of a sandwich it is. Now I want it to be on this side instead of this side, so I'm going to click flip horizontal and move it a little bit that way. Here we go. Once again, right click, we have bacon, we're going to lock that. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is find, actually, we are going to add the top of the bread sandwich to this. So we're going to find our bread again, copy, back to photo, photo P. Oh my gosh, Pixlr. If I say photo P, it, I mean Pixlr. I get these confused all the time. Um, to paste, control V or edit paste. We're going to take our magic wand. The settings are fine. Click, backspace, click, backspace. And then control D to take away the dots. And then we're going to click our eraser tool to get rid of that little line. And once again, it's not getting rid of anything underneath of it because we are only selected on this layer. So the only thing that would get affected is this piece of bread. Okay. Clicking my move tool. That way I don't erase anything else. Um, so we're going to make this a little bit smaller and we're going to turn it. Now, I want this to be small enough where you can kind of see all the ingredients underneath. That looks good to me, maybe a little bit bigger. And if you need to move any other ingredients, this might be a little bit, you know, tedious work, but you could always unlock something. If you unlock it, you just click on the, um, you can just click on the lock and it'll unlock it. And then this eyeball will show where it is. Um, if you want, you can and you click on that layer, you'll be able to move You'll be able to move the things that you want to move. So this this little tomato guy, oh, I'll be able to move him if I want to, just like that. Um, but you don't have to do that. If everything looks good, then don't worry about it. All right. So next, I want to toast this bread a little bit because it's looking a little bit soggy. So to do that, we are going to find the burn and dodge tool, which is one of my favorites, or dodge slash burn tool. I'm sorry. It looks like this circle that has a half moon. You're going to click on that. So this top. Up here, this is the toolbar for this. We don't want it to go lighter. We want it to go darker. So we're going to click darken. Midtones are fine. Um, this is just kind of a good happy medium. And our brush size is 40. That's good. Strength is 30. We could just start there. And my brush is very small. I want to make this a little bit bigger. So to do that, I'm, I believe, let's check. Let's confer with the keyboard controls. Making my brush bigger, ah, make brush bigger, control, plus, and then the less than, less than greater than sign. Okay. Control plus, oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So I want to make it about this big. I'm going to start cooking the edges of my bread. Now, once again, we're only on this bread layer, so it's only going to cook this. So if you go off of it, it won't make anything else look weird. So you can kind of see it getting a little bit darker on the edges. And if you want to make it darker on the inside a little bit too, you can do that. And every time you click, so I'm clicking again, it gets darker and darker. So it's important that we do this like through layers, which that's what this is, but that way it looks a little bit more realistic. Get a little bit in there. All right. And depending on how toasted you want your bread I guess that's up to you um, we are going to pause for right now this is going to be part one 
Actually, I'm not going to pause yet. I'm going to click the move tool and then I'm going to lock this guy. And we have bread locked. Done. We're going to save this before we do anything else. Um, and then we're going to move on to part two because I don't know how long this is going to take in class and I don't want this to go over. So we're going to click file, save. We are still working on this. So what we don't want to save it as a JPG at the moment. And if we did, that wouldn't be the worst thing to ever happen, but we want to make sure we have access to all of our layers. And if it's saved as a JPG, we won't have access to them. So you're going to click PXZ at the bottom. PXZ is a Pixlr document. So it's in the native format, so you'll be able to save it the way it is. Um, you don't have to click this little thing. We don't need to make it huge. Just click Save As. And this, I'm not on a Chromebook, so this comes up for me. It might ask you to save again, and if that's the case, it's already named, so you click Save. And then you just have to wait a second, and it should come up with a notification that it has saved. At least on your Chromebooks it will. I don't know if it will here, but on your Chromebooks it will come up right here on the right. Okay, so it just kind of closes out. Now, the good thing about Pixlr is that it sometimes, I'm not saying you should, definitely shouldn't count on this, but sometimes it does save it to the desktop or to the actual website. So if I, since I already saved it, I can click refresh and it did, it's right here. So this doesn't always work. It's not always there. I don't know why, but it is most of the time. Um, so you still have to save it to your desktop, but it's, this is a much easier way for it to be saved. So we're going to continue working on this in part two. And if you have any questions, of course, just let me know. You're able to rewind, fast forward, and we should be good to go in the next video.